Oh my God. Okay. We are derailed before hitting any point in our sheet. That's true. I believe that the pre-show chatter serves a purpose. Like I'm an ah. Uh. Okay. Are we ready? I'm going to just I'm be ready. quiet. Me too. Let's begin. Welcome to this very special LingFest 23 episode of Because Language, a show about linguistics, the science of language. My name is Daniel Midgley. Let's meet the team. He's known around here as the Dice Man. <laughs> but unfortunately, oh, God. he doesn't know I why because he doesn't have a memory that lasts two shows back. No, that's absolutely accurate. It's a reference to whether you say either or either and it's just random. Oh, I see. That bonus I thought it was episode. an oblique reference to the obscure, terrible, like, 80s book, The Dice Man. There was just a morally repugnant story about a guy who lived his life that way, which you okay. know, it's not inaccurate also, I guess. I think I've read that. Uh, it's Ben Ainsley. Hello. And uh, even if no Zoomer ever thought she was cool, she is still <laughs> undeniably and perpetually <laughs> Cool. It's Hedvig Hurgard. Yeah. Yeah. Dig yeah. that. Dig that. Yeah. And uh, hello to... Yeah, oh. I'm... Mm. Mm. No, no, go. forge ahead, Hedvig. Oh, you, you're the one. No, I was just going to talk bullshit. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have just plenty of chances for by. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's going to happen. Don't worry about it. Okay. Hello to everyone joining us on Zoom. You are our wonderful patrons who give us ideas, who give us financial support. You make it possible to keep the show going, paying the, our bills, and you are the reason why the regular episodes are free for everyone. So thanks for being here. This is a chance to have fun. We're going to do something really special, and that is we're going to be voting on tricky language issues. Our votes from this episode will be binding on all English users for all time, because that's yes. how language works. Yes. No one elected us. We are <laughs> we were summoned by a higher being, and um, that's it. Yeah. The higher being. Do you remember the last one of these that we did? It was a couple of years ago. I did. I do. I mean, yeah, yeah. We yeah, yeah, lots me, too, of stuff. me too, me too. Yeah, for sure. It was really good. I really, uh, I really, I really liked it. I have a memory. Of oh, it. I it's enjoyed a really it. Strong memory. I just remember discussing back and forth a lot. Now I don't always recall which one won, <laughs> uh, but I recall having a good time. It's, well, you know, I'll tell you. We decided in that episode that when you turn the aircon down, the room gets warmer. Warmer. Good. We determined that fish were indeed wet. Obviously. And water is wet. Obviously. We decided that if a test was deceptively simple, it was easy or hard. Easy. Hard. It was easy. That's what we decided. Okay, well, that's obviously wrong because I don't agree with it. <laughs> well, that's that's too bad because you were there. You could have said something <laughs> at a time. I, I almost certainly did I, at I'm length. Pretty sure he did. Yeah, actually, like, I think yeah. he did. Yeah, Ad nauseum. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we decided that if something happened bi weekly, it was uh, not every two weeks, but it was twice a week. It was Obviously. close. It was close. Mm. So there were, there were, oh, and we decided that um, next, if it's Saturday and you say next Monday, then it's Monday week. But if it's Saturday and I say, let's get together next Friday, then it's the coming Friday. It's like four or five days is like some kind of next limit. You can't say it's the next one before, like when yeah. it's two or three days. It has to be six or seven. Okay. Mm, so yeah, ben, yeah, I'm with ben that looks one. with disapproval. Ben doesn't like this one. I okay. protest. Okay. <laughs> like I just, I protest. Well, we have new topics to argue about. Yes. yes. Good. Yes, we and do. argue I shall. But first... Lead us in, Ben. Oh, yep. Show notes. That's the thing. Hold on. One second. No, you just have to do the thing that you do where you lead me in. Oh, we say, what's oh, okay, going cool. on yeah, in can... the... 
So, oh, wh- let's let let's let Hedvig have a crack. She's been doing the show for I don't know years now. I reckon she's up to the task. Uh, oh, okay. No, Daniel. <laughs> no, no, Daniel looks so bad. <laughs> oh my god! And I honestly I think, think I'm not. So I acting. think we just found one of Daniel's like ASD adjacent icks because that was. That was deep. That ran deep <laughs> yeah. in his soul. He was, was just that, like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't want that. I was don't that want convincing? that at all. You bought that? There okay. are. Oh yeah. There, yeah, 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 yeah. There are. That was no, no, That's no, what you that were doing, real. Daniel. Good cover. Good cover. Um, I want to hear it. I want heavy. No, I'm. I I accept that. Uh, I I'm not good at everything. That's fine. <laughs> I don't think that's like, actually what's being reflected here. I think Daniel just has a completely irrational aversion immediately in his soul to that. Hedvig, hey, Daniel, take... what's been going on in the world of linguistics in the week gone past? No, I don't want you. I want Hedvig. Do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry. This is mutiny. Fine. <laughs> hey, Daniel. Yes. No. What? No. The bloody hell has been going on in the world of linguistics? Tell Give me, me kitty. Tell me the news, you bastard. Oh, fuck it. Okay, this one was suggested by Rianne, and it's about Australian money. So this is going to be, you know, this is going to have a lot of breadth. Uh, it seems mm-hmm. that King Charles will not appear on the new Australian $5 note. It's not a five-pound note either. Take that, monarchists. <laughs> Fair enough. The uh, worst person in Australian politics, whose name is? Uh, Peter Dutton, I'm going with. Thank you. Very good. good. Uh, I, still. Look, there's, there's competition, by the way. I don't feel like that's a lock. I feel like I we could definitely throw some other names forward. There's a Queenslander but... woman that maybe. Oh, that one, that one. Time could have been that we could have said Christopher Pine, of all things. Mm, oh, Remember those days? favorite mummy. Yep. But uh, no, Peter Dutton's. He said it was another attack on our systems, on our society, on our and our institutions. To which I say, challenge accepted. Uh, can I, I mean, profess a ignorance around how like m- money works when uh, like famous royals die? Well, uh, so so can you can someone just run me through what's happening in England first of all? Like, do they just change all their money? There's a new no. sheriff in town. From from the no. time that it happens, they just start printing different money. Well, they're printing money all the time. Yeah, that, and then that, they I change understand. the design, and then the old money, as long as it's within a certain period, is still valid currency. Yeah, like so it's that what you think I all it get. Is. I think it is. But what I'm asking yeah. is, have they immediately, like the day Prince Charles took the throne, did all the <laughs> new everything that's getting stamped and printed now have his visage on the back? Well, first of all, the Cory Bobs are in May. It hasn't happened yet. Cory oh. Bob? Let's coronation. Coronation. Oh, oh hang on a second. Who the oh, fuck no. is who the fuck is in charge? <laughs> um, like my understanding is like the the queen who like died, she went up a tree a princess and came down a queen because her dad died. Okay. Uh anybody want to jump in and tell us who's in charge right now? Well, obviously, the, obviously, like I chose the wrong words. The royals aren't in charge. Who is the king or queen at the moment? Is it the king consort? He's officially the king, but he hasn't been coronated yet. That's he officially became our king immediately. Right. Thank you, Annie. So, <laughs> what, hang on. Do we tie the money to the coronation? Is that how this works? This is very odd. I I think I've heard that there's a lot of money coming out that's going to still be the queen for quite a while because those mm-hmm. plans have been in the works for a long time. And mm. um, I actually am uh, not sure when the king's money would come out, but I, I think we can be prepared to have queen money for quite a while. And in Australia, we're also going to have queen money for quite a while. There won't be a change for, for quite a bit. That needs to be planned and things. However, it looks like we are going to have uh, not an Aboriginal person, but rather an Aboriginal theme. That's according to the head of the RBA, the Reserve Bank. Wait, as in instead yeah. of the king or the queen? Correct. Yeah. King oh, Charles hey. won't be on there. Maybe like artwork oh, or something. Oh, cool, 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 yes, cool. Something like I that. had okay, so we buried the lead on that one a little bit because you said King Charles isn't going to be on it. I assumed Lizzie was just going to keep rocking the pearls. Oh right, no, not really. Um, Wicked. That's great news. 
here's how this usually works. The queen usually ends up on the lowest denomination note, and she was on the paper $1 note, but that got discontinued in 1984 and moved over to coins. So then the $5 note became the lowest one, and so the $5 note got her picture on it in 1992. Wicked. But now we're going to not have uh, Prince slash King Charles on the money. I think that's huge. I think that not having the monarchy on our money, that's kind of bigger than when Triple J decided not to have the hottest 100 vote on Australia Day, January 26th. Okay. I think, well, okay, you, you picked a similarly not huge thing, though. So I like, think they're both huge. I think these are the what? things that move things. Uh, no, I think they are symptoms of things that have already moved. And I think Australians don't use cash that much. So very yeah, well, that, that's, that's, that's another another that's really good point. Crucial thing, right? Is like mm -hmm. like this right? this thing Who's is how I've that? paid for everything for ages. Very yeah. very slight correction. We will still have yep. King Charles on our money. He'll just be on the coins. On the coins, yes. Yeah, yeah okay. the, the oh, design okay. is still being finalized. It'll get printed sometime in the middle of this year, they say. Okay. <gasps> but, I forgot about. But coins. again, like who who is going to see that? Probably mm. not a lot of people, right? Fewer and fewer of us. Yes, I think yeah. it's diminishing. But to say that we like all don't use money is probably a bit of an exaggeration. Like, there's still a lot of people who pay in cash. I know because I stand behind them in lines for things at shops, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> as they count it out. <laughs> Good point. Um, let's go on. This next story is mm. suggested by Diego. Diego's, are you are you here? By chance, Diego doesn't look list. like he's here. Diego doesn't look like he's here. All right. Oh, by Diego. the way, just just to go back, uh, Pharaoh Cat says Australians in general don't like Charlie. This is what I wanted to say. Hedvig and I were having a discussion. You know, I said when the Queen dies, what's going to happen? I thought that maybe we this would be the impetus to heave over into a republic. And Hedvig, as I remember, you were saying, I think everyone's probably going to give Charles a chance. Let's say he's been. Well, he's been it's going to be so like, long. oh, he's new on the job. He waited for job. such a long time. We don't want to pull the rug out of him as he just got there. Like, and I think this is evidence that we are in fact actually aiming for a major monarchist rug pull. I don't know, but it might nah, be. I disagree. A slow... I think you are. No, nah, I think Daniel, <laughs> you are profoundly discounting Australian. If it isn't like, don't fucking muck with it. Ism. Like Australians are just so deeply like, oh man, it's not it's not causing me any fucking problems. Let's just leave it alone, eh? Like that's just we're so lazy. We're are such you saying lazy that we're a people. bunch of affluent, comfortable middle class sort of yes. conservatives? And we've got we've already got one referendum this year when like referendums are so rare and a big deal anyway. I can't see a Republican referendum coming down the pike. What's the referendum this year? On um, Indigenous Voice in Parliament. Oh, Daniel. Ah, we've got to focus Daniel. on that. Slip my um, mind. Ah. Oh, well, at least I know how I'm voting on that one. Yeah, well, true. Let's Wait, move you on. You don't know how you'd vote on a... Anyway, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway is the right answer. Suggested by Diego, this one is about... This one is about the Amorite language, which was not one that I was really aware of because it's so ancient and was possibly even like not considered to be a language for lack of evidence. But there's an article in Live Science by Tom Metcalf about some clay tablets covered in what looks like cuneiform, discovered in Iraq, about 4,000 years old, and the article calls it a Rosetta Stone. Let's uh, dig back into our memory. What's the Rosetta Stone? That back. was a piece of rock that was discovered uh, in the like somewhere in the Middle East, and it had three different languages on it. From memory, it had Greek, cuneiform, and Egyptian. No, nope. it had. Uh, you got two out of three. Had okay. Uh, we got Greek and Egyptian uh, hieroglyphics. What was the third? Sumerian. Nope. Akkadian. Um, now it's going to be one of those things where it's got a synonym, and I say no to the synonym, which is actually correct. <laughs> Demotic. Oh, sh sh oh. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, Vers <laughs> I got to move things along here. Heather guessed yeah, yeah, Coptic. Yeah, yeah. 
No, it's demotic, a version that was spoken okay. by the people. But uh, we it had those three uh, same thing th written in three languages, so they were able to go back and forth and say, well, if these all say the same thing and Egyptian hieroglyphics look like this, then we can decipher Egyptian, and they did. Well, this is kind of like a Rosetta Stone as well, because this has Akkadian, which we can read, and it has a language known mm -hmm. as Amorite. And the Live Science article has uh, a bit of an email from Dr. Manfred Krebernick and Dr. Andrew R. George. Who say that our knowledge of Am quote our knowledge of Amorite was so pitiful that some experts doubted whether there was such a language at all end quote. It is similar to Hebrew, but the writing uh, predates Hebrew because it is cuneiform, where you would take kind of a kind of a piece of wood, a reed, yeah, like a corner of a stick, mm -hmm. right? Like you just and you, like, make little liney things. Oh, that's it. You just press it into the mm -hmm. clay. So it's really exciting to find this, and it contains lots of ceremonial language. It contains phrases. It contains some poetry. Uh, it's it's a pretty cool find. That it is, is really, cool. really neat. Where was Acadia? Question mark. Where was Acadia? I know this. I know this. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. I can do that. Um, so uh, Acadia was a kingdom in what we sometimes call Mesopotamia, which is uh -huh. the land between two rivers, uh, Euphrates and Tigris, in uh, largely what we think of today as modern Iraq. Um, Acadia was next to Sumer and was uh, sort of interacted with Sumer. stuff. But as far as I know, Acadian and Acadian culture is considered to be uh, Semitic, right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. So the, they're related the writing to actually like, has a lot like has a lot to do with Hebrew. It looks a lot like Hebrew. Yeah. So it's like related to like Hebrew and Arabic, etc. Whereas Sumer, we don't know where the F they came from. And if you're interested, there is a great Aliens. episode. Well, there are all these things about that they came from the water. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, the the Great Pod Fall of Civilizations has an episode. Uh, what's that episode called? I forget what, which one it is, but they have a great episode on it, and it's like really cool. Now I have to find it and stick it in our show notes. That's because language dot com. That's okay. Don't find it now. Oh, hey, cats are cruising around. Anybody have a cat? Bring them into shot. We'll feature them. Did you not see the cat earlier? Mm. My cat. Um, I pulled my her up to the is, mic because she was purring really I loudly. Saw some I did. I saw. She I saw was cement. So cute. She's so cute. Okay, so in our last episode, we mentioned a couple of language finds, uh, which nobody's heard yet because I haven't edited it yet. But this is another <laughs> one, so it's really cool. And then we've got uh, our last news item from Joe via email, and Aristamo yes. also suggested this story. Joe says, I'm a regular listener to your podcast, and it's always wonderful. A friend shared this news story on a private Discord, and well, it provides a disheartening example of how messing up with language can serve to increase social injustice. What's the story? Well, according to an article uh, in Alaska Public, mm -hmm. there was a typhoon, Typhoon Merbach, which caused a lot of destruction in Alaska, and the U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, hired a company based in California to translate some information into two languages, in Yupiak and Yungtun, which is also known as Central Yupik. And when the translations came back and they were given to the people as a way of telling them, here's how to get help, it actually just contained gibberish. It was basically oh. text copied and pasted and rearranged from an old book from the 1940s. Some of the sample text was... Oops. Your husband is a polar bear, Skinny. Tomorrow he will go hunting very early and will bring nothing. Ouch. Joe says, I mean, FEMA releasing word salad, even in the wrong script, as instructions for people harmed by recent floods to apply for aid. It beggars belief, if I'm honest, how many layers of due diligence have to fail at FEMA for this to be the result. Anyway, I thought you might like the opportunity to rake them over the coals a bit. I hope you folks are well and safe. Thanks again for such an informative and hilarious podcast no thank you joe i have a question yes ben i want to put hedvig on the spot can i do that yeah all right hedvig you mm. get a call from someone at your school and basically that call is like hey i've just been in touch by like um someone from msf has just got in touch with us medicine sans frontiers they're gonna okay. do a mm -hmm. thing 
in Samoa, but they're really struggling to get hold of anyone who like can do any translation work. And you Mm -hmm. were the person that I thought of who could help them out. Now you as a linguist who has familiarity with that language and connections, what do you do? How do you, how do you help this aid organization translate important stuff? I would reach out to people I know in Samoa who are native speakers and who know it much, 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 much better than me. And I would specifically ask MSF if there's payment or if it's a volunteer thing. Uh, And then I would reach out to my network and find someone that I know two native Samoan linguists who would do a better job than me, for example. (laughs) So, Hmm. yeah, I would never try to do it myself. So this is this is. Thank you. Sorry but to put I would you on the spot. Help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry to put you on the spot. Like, but basically my question was no, like, yeah, this the happens, logical the, thing this here is hap- like, like... This kind of thing has happened to yeah, me. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? So why would FEMA not do that? <laughs> like, why would they not just get in well, touch? They, 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 with... trusted, they trusted the, uh, the agency called Accent on Languages, a California company. They didn't go to anybody in Alaska. They went to to California. And... But maybe they thought that that company would do that, right? Yeah, right. You know, so I guess yeah. But like, and and I suppose rightly so, right? Because if a company who proffers to do these services fucks something up this badly, they're not going to get a lot more work. But mm. then I guess my question is, why would the company have fucked it this badly? <laughs> like, they're overconfident tech bros. Oh uh, yeah, well. The head of the company uh, said, okay, we fired the people who were responsible for this. We're not using those translators again. It goes through different layers. So FEMA talks to the translation company, and then the company hires people that they think will do a good job, but they don't have knowledge of the language. So right. the fuck up can happen on many different levels. And well, that's what we get. It's basically the equivalent of when there's somebody who's hired to be the sign language interpreter, but they're just making it up. We've seen right. a couple of stories like that. And it's just, you know, it just falls down sometimes. It's horrible. But mm. it just goes to show that adequate translation is not just a language issue. It is a social justice issue. It is a health issue. It's an education issue. Some of the speakers of the languages were punished at school for speaking their language. And so having garbage presented to them instead of good information kind of really opens up some old wounds. So multiple levels of verification would really help. Hmm. All right. It's time to play related or not. In this game, we give you two words and you have to guess if they are related etymologically or if the similarity between them is merely coincidental. I love this. Only when I beat Hedvig, but I love it. We all had a lot of fun playing Yeah, No, or No, Yeah, with the good people at the Oxford English Dictionary, but that sponsorship has run its course. But we still like the game. We like the game. I'm torn on whether I should go back to like viciously mocking them. (laughs) Because this, (laughs) I don't want to, I know the hand's no longer feeding us, so I can, I can bite it now, but like maybe it'll feed us again. Do you want to? Like there are, they're a dictionary. <laughs> like, what are you gonna? Why you need to bite them? Yeah, you know what? And Dick's right there in the net. Sorry, had to. He's right there. <laughs> ben loved you, OED. He would have cut a bitch. <laughs> I really okay, would. Okay. Anyway, related or not, game, it's a so fun we're gonna game. Play it. And <sighs> if we get sponsored by another dictionary, we'll just use them for it. We'll Absolutely. get in touch, and we might consider it. But for now, yeah. we're gonna pull our etymological information from a wide range of sources. So. Here's this round, and everybody else feel mm-hmm. free to play along. If you are doing architecture, and you're an mm-hmm. architect, one of the things mm-hmm. that you might design is an arch. Mm-hmm. But are they yes. related or not? Uh, I see. I see. Arch and architecture, related or not? Okay, so Ben and Hedvig, I'm going to ask you whether you think yes or no and um, in your reasons, and then I'm going to invite people to unmute and give their guesses as well. No sneaky looking things up yet. Mm. Arc. Hedvig Arc. says yes. Arch and architecture. I also say yes. Hedders, do you want to give your reason first? Because you got in there with a thumbs up real bloody quick. Um... I don't know. It just like oh. <laughs> well, then medieval, you can shut like, up. I've got an idea. <laughs> yeah, good. Go ahead. Arches are really important. Was all I was gonna say. So like, it's important to design them. 
I've got a slightly more um, detailed guess, I guess. That doesn't mean it's accurate, though. Um, okay. So Go. I'm thinking a lot of our words for shit like architecture comes from the phase in English, I should say, um, that phase of like Christendom where we were just frothing on the classical world, right? Like we're like the greatest thing you could possibly be was like a thinker from ancient Greece or whatever. So I'm thinking that they've, that, that architecture probably like as a word and being an architect as an idea probably bubbled mm -hmm. around in like the 15, 1600s when everyone was just had a massive hard on for like Greek classicism. And because of that, they look back at that mm -hmm. time and were like, oh, arches were like the things, right? Like with the, the, the fucking Roman aqueducts and all that sort of shit, like mm -hmm. always arch-based. Love, kind of Love their arches. Love their arches. Loved it. Loved it. Froth on the arches. So I'm thinking that's the link, basically. They, they looked back and were like, well, those cats were amazing and we love them for everything and they were, they were mad for arches. So we'll call it architecture. Okay. Anybody else? We've got two yeses. Who says no and maybe not? We're getting a lot of yeses in chat. I have one more argument for a yes. Okay. But I yes. kind of want to hear an argument for a no. I do I too. Kind of <laughs> Come on, somebody. And... It's going to be really good if it is no, because we're all going to look like doofuses. All right. Nobody wants to... Put it out there, so I will give you the answer mm. in three, two, yeah. one. Everyone's guess. The answer is Ooh. arch. What? 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 I got Annie's an from guessing heaven. no. Annie's the lone no. Is she the only one guessing no? All right. I stand yeah. alone. Annie, you are yeah. correct. They are not related. <gasps> oh! Oh, upset. So the word arch comes from Latin arcus, a bow. But in architecture, the archi doesn't have anything to do with a bow. It means chief or master. That's Latin. Which is why you can have an archduke or an archdeacon. Also oh. unrelated to the archie arches. It's from a master or a chief. The tecton part means builder or carpenter. So an architect is a master builder. How about that? There we go. Wow. Annie with a win. She's got a mm. very nice yeah, tabby cat sure. and she is definitely smarter than all of us. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Discord, I asked people, uh, did you have any that you wanted to try? Now's a good time to unmute and lay it on us. You can stump us all. I'm stroking my chin provocatively. Fair There's account. one that I was actually... Uh, curious about and so that's why I'm using this one um, mm -hmm. if you have a grave that you dig in the ground or you think something is grave as in um, important oh. or significant or yeah. significant mm -hmm. yeah grave Serious. insult yes yep. are those two things related or not yes oh this is a guess but I'm saying yes because Things that are graves are deep, and also uh, a grave is a serious matter. So I, I do think that they would be uh, related. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull an Annie. I'm gonna go. No, I'm gonna go and no. Oh, contrarian. Yep. Uh, it seemed to work for her. So I'm gonna count. I'm gonna be <laughs> My guess <laughs> is that grave, as in the seriousness thing, as opposed to the hole in the ground where you stick dead people. Um, I think that might come, that might be a. Uh, a shifted loan word like grav from some other kind of language. Yep. Okay. And Hedvig, what's your what's your guess? I'm not really sure, but I'm also like Laura thinking about accent grav. I am too. Um, which my French teacher always said that because accent grav goes from up to down if you That's think right. left to right. And she always said we should imagine like a shovel in the grave <laughs> to remember. Uh, oh, very nice. That's how I remember it. Um, it is sort of same in Swedish, like, and grav, a grave, and this person is uh, gravely underrated, gravt underskattad. So Ooh, that's a uh, they're strong, like exactly the mm, same. Yeah. But is mm -hmm. that just because of the same reason that they're the same in English? 
I think they're related, but I'm feeling doubtful. Okay. Farrah Cat, what Vanish you got? Which, Vanish which they call or not get out. Uh, which is like mm-hmm. rough in, in, instead of, I hadn't thought of those as it's related. Oh, good old. I find well be. Yeah. Like, uh, like coarse? Yeah, of course. Yeah, like groove salt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't I thought of that. I think related. that's different. Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. That's a good point. Would you like the answer? I yeah, I think I'm ready. Very much. They are not related. Oh, <gasps> fuck you. Oh, Get God. some. Come on. Both <laughs> of them have Proto Indo European roots, which is probably why they're very similar across multiple Proto-Indo-European languages. Um, But grave, as in the digging of a grave, comes from a word grave to uh, cut or scrape. So that's that digging motion. Um, Mm -hmm. And grave, as in heavy, comes from another word, which I cannot pronounce because it's got like a DH in it somewhere. Um, (laughs) But it uh, it means something that is heavy physically. So these two words are Mm -hmm. unrelated and just sound very similar. I wonder Dang. then if that's why um, the piece of armor is called Greaves. Don't know that, that is a one. good question. But Ben, not the host one, is asking: Is that the same word groove? And it does. It appears it goes as well back to the Proto-Indo-European root "greb" to dig or to bury or to scratch, which is exactly where we see the grave that you dig come from so groove and grave are related but grave and grave aren't huh. when i when i shuffle off this mortal coil i expect all of you to gather around my groove your, your groove you don't know where your groove is yet do you i don't think i'll have a groove <laughs> anybody got one more i think we have time for one more and then it's time to vote i thought laura had one Oh, Laura, uh, you no, wanna... Laura just answered my question. Thank you, Laura. Greaves comes from um, French for shin. Oh. Oh, Laura, Laura just has as well. Oh, my right. God, Laura, look, look at you go. You're, like, busier than a beaver. Legend. Answering my Lay question, us, having one of your own. Let's hear it. Boom. Uh, okay, so Laura says tambourine and tamil shanter. <laughs> the hat. Uh, I don't know what a tamil shanter is. Apparently, Neither it's a hat. I. It's a hat. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, imagine. I'm just gonna like Google tam because I know what a tambourine is. It's that round thing that goes ding, 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 and like indie yeah. pop bands. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm also gonna. And I'm gonna Google look up tam-o-shanter. a ta- tamil shanter. I don't think oh, they're related. It's, it, it, it's a hat. I it's can a Scottish hat. It. It's, it's the yeah exactly. It's the thing that you imagine Scottish people wearing when they play golf. Uh, the yes. ball on the top, like sort of like a beret. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the best one of these that I can to describe, and I reckon this will get a lot of people. It's what Genie from Aladdin wears when he turns himself into a Scottish dog to do the laddie gag. Mm. Yes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is exactly that. <laughs> Pharaoh Cat has a putative similarity between the roundness of the tam and the roundness of the tambourine. Mm-hmm. Like those are the only two things that are round. I reckon this one is related. Nah, I'm not. I'm not. Total coincidence. Total coincidence? All right. I mm. think they're related. I think they're related. Okay. Let's yeah, do I'm it. going on my own. Come here. on. All right. Now, we have got right here one of the rarest of all things Ben and Hedvig in unison, and we could potentially defeat Daniel, which would be. Just the best thing ever. It's always two of you against me. It's always the two of you. All right. Okay, Laura, we're ready. Put your bets. What have we got? What have we got? We're waiting for the chat oh, to come Laura's through. already written. No, we go. yes, no, yes. Uh... Completely different, but I like the Tam O'Shanter uh... etymology, which is why I shared uh... it. Yay, I win. I won this uh... one. Oh, Ew. this is so, fucking bullshit. But good job, Laura. Sorry, that was yeah. good. That was good. Laura, that was great. I am booing Daniel. If in I, doubt, always know I'm booing Daniel. I I value your hatred. No, what is it? Uh, Tam O'Shanter from Tam from a man. It's a man's name, Tom of Shanter. 
Of course it would be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And then the tambourine is like, I remember things like timbrel or tem. Oh, the tambourine. It's the een is diminutive. It's a small drum. It's a small tambour, a small timbrel. Timbrel. Very cool. I love this game. But now it's time to solve the world's problems. So oh, yes, let's by, let's do it by arguing a lot. Okay, but we're gonna try to keep it fairly brisk. So let's get it going. Here we go. Number one. I'm launching this one. I had to walk ten kilometers there and back. I had to walk ten kilometers there and back. How far away is the place? Is it five kilometers, ten kilometers? Or 20 kilometers. Make your votes now. Do you... I've voted. There are 11 of us. We've got seven votes. Okay. Does anybody have a reason why they think it might be that way? Uh... I feel like it needs a comma. A comma? I had to walk 10 kilometers there, comma, and back. If it... If the comma was there, it would mean 10 kilometers either way. Without the comma, I feel like it means five kilometers either way. Okay. Anybody else got uh, any other reasonings? No, I, I think I'd expect people, I'd expect someone to, to say, to, to specify that, that they meant like in total. So mm. I sort of understand it as with the, the comma, then Ben mentioned it, unless people was specifying like I mean all in all. Okay. I expect I expect it to mean all in all. I would expect it to be five kilometers because if you go ten kilometers there and back, there's an end there and I add those together. Try to not go mathematical about it, but just go by your feels. If I said, oh man, I had to walk ten kilometers there and but back. But what if Farrakat's feelings are math? <laughs> I, that's what then, then that's like my like i agree with her like <laughs> i feel math yes <laughs> i'm there as a one like you know okay well it's time to close off the poll let's see how we went it turns out that it's 50 <gasps> 50 no help yeah. at all yeah but daniel you didn't vote and i didn't vote why didn't you vote i voted because i can't vote why can't you vote? Because you have made me a co-host of the session. Oh, he I made suppose... me too, and I can vote. No, I well, didn't. Clearly... I just made you possible to record. In... Yeah, exactly. Let's... Clearly, animal, oh. animal farm style. All the animals are equal. Some are just more equal than others. There it um, is. Yeah, yeah. 50, 50. Okay. But, but, but fact... Daniel, that means you and I can decide this thing. We can duke it out. What do you say, Ben? Well, why don't you tell me where you sit? What do your feels say, Daniel? I think 10 kilometers. I just feel like it's 10 kilometers because 10 has a salience. Like, I don't feel like I'm doubling it if I say 10 kilometers. I feel like that's one way. And then you go back. So, yeah, yeah I think you're right. I think the comma really does make a difference because if I say there, comma, that's 10. Yeah. And back, which is a separate thing. Yeah. So... Then it would be twenty. So you're 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 thinking it's the you think the place is five kilometers away and this person has traveled ten kilometers in total, correct? No, I think it's ten kilometers away. No, he thinks the other way. Yeah. Do I? Uh, mm. Yeah, you okay. think it's ten kilometers away. That's what you just said, Daniel. Yes. But I might then change why my were you mind because I talk you, about it more. You crazy man. Okay. Well, we're just gonna um do the next one. And Fair it's enough. this. Okay. I was looking forward to a decision. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I think I think Daniel cast the tie-breaking vote. But I don't remember what I said. Uh, oh, you it's absolute stressful. buffoon. Well, that's just how it goes. I substituted oil for butter. Does that mean I added oil, not butter? Or does it mean I added butter, not oil? I substituted oil for butter. Yeah, okay. I just went with my gut. But mm. I, I have a feeling that this one's going to be a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah, so me too. People, people are making the right choice here. I agree. Democracy, democracy has a place for this moment. As long as it's what you like. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Everyone thinks Katie that. just said, my gut changed its mind twice, and I feel that. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. 
Let's close off the vote. And what do we got? Huh. Just about everyone Most thinks. People... Yeah. Yep. Go ahead, have be the narrator. Most people voted that the thing that was added to the pot was oil. Let instead the of butter. Okay. Well, now it's time for the next one. Dude. Just to be clear as well, uh, whilst I completely agree semantically with what we've decided, cooking-wise, no, butter. No. <laughs> like, so it's, let's cook in that butter. It's delicious. Depends on if it's brownies or something. Anyway, let's go on to the next one. <laughs> I often mistake Stephen for John. I often mistake Stephen for John. What does that mean? Does that mean I think it's Stephen, but it's really John? Or I think it's John, but it's really Stephen? Or could it be either? I'll give you some silence so that you can achieve mental clarity. I often mistake Stephen for John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silence, you said, and I needed it. I was looking at the text and you kept talking. I was like, it's not helping. I'm shutting Shut up now. This is me shutting up. You're trapped. <laughs> All right. No, 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 no. I had no shut. Not enough time? No, it's not enough time. Just Come be on, quiet for a moment Come longer. On, mate. Wait, this is one of the few times that we have done a show at a time where you're supposed to be like, like good times. You're at your peak. This is like noon for you. Okay, I'm going to call. Oh, we've only got, we've got a few, a couple more people who need to vote. Okay, I put my headphones back on so I can hear you again. I can. <laughs> <laughs> Ben, I think I'm going to make you not a co-host so that you can vote. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, fair enough. I can record, but I'm not a co Okay. You're not a co-host. All good, all good, all good. By the way, I would vote for the thing that's, like, winning here. You would? Yeah. Regardless of what that is. Okay, no, no, I'm no. going to... As in, I agree with the people on this one. Okay. <laughs> Let's see it. Dude. When I mistake Stephen for John, I think it's John, but it's really Stephen. Isn't this a funny one? It is. That it should be, like, you'd think this would be so straightforward, but it's not. Why do we get hung up on this one? I, only I think, think the I four. Think... It was the same with the boiling, oiling, the boiling utter. I, I, yeah, I feel like there's just a tongue twister for your brain here. That's all. It's like, I often make mm -hmm. mistake Stephen for John. And then you've got to read through the two answers. I think it's Stephen, but it's really John. I think it's John, but it's really Stephen. It's like, wait, fucking, which one's the subject? <laughs> which one's the object? I'm fucking, I don't know. Like, mm, exactly. <laughs> mm. um, mistake is one of those. Let me just see if I have any notes on this one. Like, it's mistake a, uh, is a synonym for confuse here, right? Like, it's, yeah. yeah. Okay, this one was given to us by Diego. This is a couple. Here. Mm -hmm. The area was restricted to locals. What does that mean? Does that mean locals couldn't go to the area, or does it mean only locals could go to the area? I voted. I, I would have voted. Ooh, very interesting. interesting. Interesting, 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 interesting. So maybe we should clarify that Daniel and Ben, I can't, but they can see the vote ticking up on the different options. Whereas mm. the rest of us plebs can just vote and then wait. <laughs> Did you all just what hear was that? that sound? Yes, I heard that. That was a very <laughs> someone, loud door. Someone driving past my building clearly has like one of those novelty car horns. It's like oh, no. <laughs> good old Perth, huh? <laughs> it's weird. Okay, I'm going to close it off here. Um, there we go. Ending the poll. And it says that most people said only locals go to the area. Okay, fair enough. But, but, but there's a but, problem here. What? Restricted is an autoantonym. Oh, yeah. Oh, you mean a contronym? Yeah, like it's it's like it's like sanction, right? Like it can mean op the opposite thing. <sighs> Trying to stop being host and clear my head here. So restricted. 
It's restricted, meaning you can't. Yeah, are we? Re- who are we restricting? Are we restricting them, or are we restricting everyone else? Yeah, what's yeah. The, like who's the, who's the other in the situation? What's the two doing? That's interesting. Okay. Mm. Um, let's go on then to the part B of this. Oh God. Yep. It continues. The area was restricted hey. to photographers. Same that sentence. Was weird. Yeah, I've just yeah, taken yeah. locals and I've added photographers. That one is harder because I, uh, I want to vote the way I did previously, which is that only photographers could go to the area. But the fact that it's photographers makes me think like they weren't allowed there because yeah, the yep. photographers are the kind of people you want to forbid from going somewhere so they don't take pictures. Uh, the area um, should... so... Now, but if you wanted to do it so that it was for photographers, then that's what you'd say. The area was restricted for photographers. For photographers. Prepositions, aren't they mysterious? Mm. They are. All right. It reminds me of like when I was listening to that, that QAnon podcast about the vote count and wherever it was, that they, they had such problems with like the press and the protesters that the police like took the parking lot, like divided and was like, okay, <laughs> press can stand over here and like QAnon folks can stand over there and like <laughs> don't don't interact with each other because you just keep fighting <laughs> never the twain and they call it a free speech zone oh, anyway. God. i remember that during the yeah. george bush years and and not liking it but i can see how it might be in the public interest to keep protesters and journalists apart hmm. let's yeah. finish this poll and i'm really surprised by this actually mm. i I thought of it as photographers couldn't go to the area, but most people thought only photographers could go to the area. It's a bit more, uh, bit more balanced. Whereas I think the last time most people thought that if the locals were, if it was restricted to locals, only the locals could go. Well, I think it's a one vote difference because before it was 78, oh. 22 and now so it's 75, 25. Okay. So we swung one person. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I think so. I was going with Hedvig's logic because we know about photographers and they might be the sort of person that you might want to restrict from an area. And so But then I thought about the parking lot, so I actually voted that it was only photographers. And like uh, okay. um I think the other Ben might have said, like there's plenty of circumstances where you need to put a little zone for photographers as well. In fact, I would argue there's probably more of those than not. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um what I like about this one is that uh real world knowledge can sometimes guide interpretation so for example what's the sentence um the police arrested the protesters because they feared violence who's they oh uh, yeah 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 the police the police arrested the protesters because they advocated violence now they isn't the police at all it's the protesters uh likely anyway yeah. So mm. we have real world knowledge and that influences our choice of how uh, pronouns lock on to antecedents, which is super interesting. Let's go on to the next one. Oh, I love this one. Floyd and the chickens are outside. Is Floyd a chicken? Your choices are Floyd is a chicken. Floyd is definitely not a chicken. Or Floyd might be a chicken. <laughs> Floyd and the chickens this are outside. Clear. <laughs> she really says. Clear. Yeah. If All anyone right. doesn't vote like me, you. Uh, <laughs> this, is like, this is like a way of pragmatics that like, that's just how like jokes, like jokes are built around this premise. Right. This is a comedy. Yep. So, um. You say you say that in a very uncomedic fashion. Like you, you're being, dare I say yeah. it, quite German about it. You're like, this is comedy. This is how comedy works. Honestly, Germans are I'm hilarious. So in touch with my German. Germans are hilarious. Uh, 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 um, <laughs> no. They, not everyone needs to be funny. And I listen to a lot of comedy, and I rarely laugh out loud. And I like to analyze comedy, and I know what that makes me but I don't care. <laughs> That's all right. That's fine. You be yourself. All right. We're going to end this poll. And okay. the answers are Floyd is definitely not a chicken, which is strange because then think about the band. I say band loosely. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
Alvin's definitely a chipmunk. Yeah, okay, but hang on, hang on. What you're keying into there is a very specific example that harkens back to like a naming convention for bands only, ah, right? Like, yes. like yes, so yes, and so yes, and yes, the Dubidees and, and, and the like, Supremes. Yeah, just all that. Sort of shit, right? Supreme. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, are we I, saying that Diana Ross is not supreme? No, I'm not talking to about whether or not she is a supreme. I know that she's the supreme, but I'm not sure if she's a supreme. Mm. Anyway, mm. there was a funny tweet on this by my Twitter pal, Q Fever, who said, just pulling that up. <laughs> um, Joycey is a pussycat. That's absolutely <laughs> true, Kitty. Thank you. <laughs> so Q Fever says... Either definite plurals don't always denote maximal sets, or they should have been called Alvin and the other chipmunks. So maximal <laughs> sets means they don't need to describe every single item in the set they refer to. So if I run into the house and I say, the chickens have gotten loose, it doesn't necessarily mean that every last one of them has gotten loose, especially if I'm in a hurry and I need to say something fast, as I would be if the chickens had gotten loose. As well as uh, Floyd. As well as Floyd. <laughs> And Floyd, who may or may not be a chicken. Floyd is a duck. I feel like, yep, so I was going with duck, or Floyd is a particularly stupid dog, like an indoor dog yes. that occasionally gets outside and then it causes absolute fucking mayhem because it's just messing mm -hmm. with shit that it has no business messing with. My partner said that maybe Floyd was a rooster, and I thought, well, that's interesting because then, like... <laughs> Floyd would be, whoever Floyd is in this group, it has to be salient in some way. Going back to our discussion with Mark Ellison, has to be salient either in being an extraordinary chicken or not being a chicken at all, somehow. Yes, I agree with that. Isn't it, by the way, by the way wild that, like, chicken denotes the age range of this animal at its, like, teenage years right and like chick is baby <laughs> chicken is teenage and like an adult is a hen mm. oh, hang on no 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 whoa 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 we i got was words all across the life shaking your head hang on no chicken no chicken chicken hang on chicken hang on hang oh, on yes chicken my understanding was was the the stand-in for like pea fowl is it not i mean it kind of is like a chicken, right? It might be both. Like, well, roosters, like what word do we use to refer to the species if not chicken? Roosters could be chickens, but chickens can't be roosters. Yes, they I can. think it's a cow cow scenario that it's both. Like okay. the species is a chicken and the teenagers are chickens. No, no, no. Like I said, Laura's like, hang on, pea fowl are a whole nother thing. I know, I know they are, Laura, but what I mean is there's peacocks and there's pea hens, but the species is pea fowl. And I thought chicken was like the version of pea fowl. Yes, but sometimes in, in this, it happens that like the species is cow, the female is a cow, and mm, the yep. male is a bull. Like we have that thing, which is lioness. annoying and it happens. Lioness, yeah. Okay. I feel so... like, Hedvig, you can probably let go of chicken being a word for a teenage chook because I don't think anybody uses that anymore. Okay. Either oh. way, regardless of the name, <laughs> we humans mostly eat teenage chickens. That yeah, is right? still true, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Hmm. Which well, is because that's, that's true for most animals that we eat, time. though. We don't let them get particularly old because then they get cut. This is taking us into marketness theory, where one animal is allowed to stand, like, usually it's the male. Like, if you see a bunch of lions and lionesses, you say, oh, look at all those lions. Oh, but if you yeah. see a bunch of, if you see a bunch of lions, you wouldn't say, hey, look at those lionesses. It doesn't go in the other direction. And usually it's the female of the species that's marked, like peahens are marked, but peacocks aren't. So peacocks can stand for both. Except in one case that I'm aware of, and that's um, where the male is marked, yeah. and that's a widower. Widows are kind of unmarked, and that's the female, but a widower is a male, and that's the marked one. So that's a what? that's a case what? where it's what where it's flipped. How? How? What is is the a widow and a widower old. an animal that I'm not familiar with, or are you just referring no, to no, people no. whose He's spouses talking have about, died? Like, I'm referring male to male and female stuff in general. Yeah, I'm referring to males and females. 
Oh, I see. In general. Sorry. Sometimes and the I male say, word can stand in for cow. all. But this is what, yeah, cows. Cows can be bulls, but not all bulls can be cows. Like if I see, maybe I'm just dumb. Yeah, and so not, the female I, is unmarked. So the, oh, okay. Because the other ones are cow. bulls. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so, gee, is there mm. I think it's true here? for some animals, mostly ones we probably eat, where the most important one is the lady one. Yeah, because rooster's marked. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and the ones and we don't eat, like dogs, it's often the male one that's the unmarked. I think yeah. the ones that we use for hunting or stuff like that. I need to anyway, do does anyone else here? We should do a. Can you do a poll for me, Daniel? Because like my grandma was convinced that like all dogs are male and all chick, all cats are sort of female. And Ooh, we had sorry. a female dog. Sorry, sorry. Can we just go back a step? Was your grandmother mm. honestly convinced that those species no. of animal? No. Okay, but just no. Conceptually. It's just that to her, dogs conceptually were male, and right. cats were conceptually female. So if she saw a cat or a dog she didn't know, she would assume. I agree that it should be fifty-fifty. But she, we had, for example, a female dog, and she would call him her. She would call her he all the time. It's like right. saying she'd be like, think... "Does he need water or something?" And we'd be like, "Yes, she could." It'd be great with a bowl of water. It's like when little kids say, I think of the number seven as a girl or something. Right, yeah. right, right. You know, that kind of thing. Or like math is red. That, Everyone agrees yes. math is red. Okay, uh, let's Annie go on to our to next. Oh, sorry. Annie? No, I want to poll and Anna has something to say. I don't want to do the poll. <laughs> please. Yes, please. I think there's like terms for like if a cow has been castrated and not like a, I yes. think a heifer is a as a female cow that has never had a baby. Um, yes. I'm not sure what you, and maybe it's a cow after it's had a baby. A, a castrated um, bull is a steer and a uncastrated male cow is mm -hmm. a bull. Yeah, there's all a ton of words. Just wanted to add some terminology. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, I agree. It's like that. Okay, it's time for another mind blow. There we go. Let's do it. How many holes does a straw have? Oh God. Haven't we done this one before? Nope. You sure? No, no, no. I can see what you fucking lunatics are voting. Jesus. <laughs> okay, we've got... That one filled up kind of quickly, actually. But we've still got a couple yeah, of... Yeah, oh, that was way so... easier. Okay. Uh, well, clearly not, because most people got it wrong. <laughs> Well, I'd like to hear your reasoning here. Let's end the poll, because I think most people mm -hmm. have finished. Here we go. The answer for all time. A straw has yeah. one hole. It's one, one hole. One hole. It's not it goes all the way hole. through. No, it does not. <laughs> Tell me your reasoning, Ben, while I well, get the geez, next poll ready. I don't know, Daniel. Perhaps because I can pinch the top of the straw at the top hole and close it off at that hole and leave the second hole open, clearly meaning there's two Fucking holes in the thing. Jesus. Come on, people. Where is your head at? God. Ben, He's does got a, a point. hole need to have, like, does a hole go through something or is a. Uh, An opening is a hole. What even is a hole? Okay. All right. Okay. Yes. Exactly. So, like, yeah. exactly. So, for example, what you your guys ear... have all described as a hole is a tube, quite a long, thin one at that. A straw is a tube. It doesn't have a tube. No, you... <laughs> your tube. <laughs> Actually, well, humans yes, are I tubes, am. and I love thinking about it. It's so good to think about. <laughs> From your mouth to your I anus, a there is uh, yep. there is a, a tube, and Correct. you are geometrically speaking just a cylinder with some fancy bits and bobs. I would describe us more as a donut, to be honest. A torus, it's quite yes. a disgusting, fleshy one. Yeah. <laughs> And and here's the one that really fucks with me. I only learned this recently. All that shit on the inside, that that internal bit, the inside of the donut that is the a outside. human being, is external tissue. What? Mm. Our yes. gut is external. Fuck Jesus. That just, when I learned that, I was like, well, everything is a lie. All, all knowledge is meaningless. I never accepted postmodernism until that moment. Is a straw a donut? No. Don't be Thank stupid, you. Daniel. All right, don't be. Just stop it. 
Okay, well, I'm gonna stop that one. Let's go on to the <laughs> next one. How do you spell oh, cylinder? But I <laughs> C Y L. I do have to say that oh, there was a funny story. Grandma is helping me. I asked this question to my three-year-old, my youngest daughter. I said, "How many holes does a straw have?" And with her three-year-old brain, she said, "One." No, two. <laughs> she had see, a pause see? instead of a panic. Proof. Poor little. Proof. The interesting thing about this question is that we don't always conceptualize all the aspects of an object. We just sort of pick it up and use it and classify it at the moment of use. So, for example, my five-year-old said, whenever we go outside, we're touching the sky. And my three-year-old said, how? And then there was a pause. And I said, we touch the air. No! And my, and my five-year-old said, yeah, air is Wrong. sky. Wrong. Air is sky. No, 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 no. no, no. No, no, no. Why not? You don't touch the sky until you get in a plane or a hot air balloon, Daniel. Come yeah. on. You do barely if, then. If I if I throw something up, it goes into the sky. I threw it up into nope. the sky. And I didn't oh, even throw it up okay. very far. If you throw it really, really if you get like a like one of those vortexes, one of those cool like footballs that does the whistly sounds, got the tail on it, yes. I Other throw a that, rock no. in, I can throw a rock into the sky. No. And it's not even that high. Okay. There's What's a really next? good YouTube What's channel next? called Philosophy Tube, which discusses some of the stuff. That's where I'll leave it. We'll put that in our show notes. And now it's time for the next one. Is everyone having fun? This one comes to I us am. from River. Which side of the bed is the left hand side, and which is the right hand side? Ooh. Is it? It's the left hand side as you look at it from the foot of the bed. It's the left hand side as you're lying in bed. Guys, guys, no, no, no. Oh. I'm glad I made you the host so that you can see the full horror. So I can just, it, yeah. As it watch transpires. My dreams crumble. No. Oh, this was a topic you weren't even aware of five seconds ago. And I now it's like care about it very being. much. I've got, a, I've got a really, yeah, I've got a strong answer for this one. Okay. And yeah. everyone right. seems to agree with me as well. Well, let's share the results. It's the left hand side as you're lying in bed. I would agree. Because who matters but, here? It's the but, person in No, bed. yeah, sure, fine. But like, this is why we have stage left and stage right. Precisely. So we yes. just say bed left and bed right. Bed left and bed right. But which is hmm. bed which which one of those two is bed left? So it is the left side of the bed as you lie in it, much as that stage is... left is the left side of the stage as you stand upon it and face the audience, because to the people on the stage or on the bed, that's the direction that matters. But if you don't specify worse. with bed left or bed right, then it's, you know, it's however you're looking at it. I have a suggestion that is better than that. I don't I think that's, think a trash that's possible. <laughs> okay, so hear me out. Your organs are not symmetrical in your body. Okay. Sure. Okay. And well, some of them uh, are, but sure. Some of them are, like the like kidneys the are, liver, the lungs for are, for example. But, you know. The liver anyway. is not, and so, the, the the way your your intestinal system. Most of us have it such that if you are feeling nauseous, it is better for you to lie on your left side, so with your right shoulder up, mm -hmm. than the other way around. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think about this when I sleep because I've noticed that this matters. And sometimes I turn around the other way and then I'm like, no, this is better. So why don't we just call it like, um, like, so, so your, um, what's the first bit, your stomach, right? So like, if you lie yeah. on your left side, <laughs> bear with me here. You're, you're, oh, you, you're, you, you're, you are on the ragged edge of my patience on this shut one. Up. <laughs> you are on the stomach side. Because that your stomach is, is down. Fucking nonsense. Mm, yeah, I have yeah, to know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stomach side and non-stomach side of oh, the bed. The no. I'm just Im I'm just impressed <laughs> that you have a magic wand with which you can bestow this knowledge upon other people. That's amazing. Oh my stomach side and not stomach side. If this is you, Hi, at by the way, full next speed time, at if you two in the bad, afternoon, I'm glad we get you at eight in the morning normally. <laughs> I'm just saying next time anyone on this call is feeling a bit nauseous or something you because you could have them flipped in your body as well so just try and feel which one is best because one is gonna like the way like 
No, the what the way that like bile and like acids work in your stomach, one is gonna make you feel worse. I have okay, heard that's this. fine. If what you wanted to do it was is like, true. hey everyone, by the way, here's an here's a nice fact about how you can feel better. How this has anything to do with the cardinal directions of beddom, I fail to see. <laughs> You know, this does tie into other aspects of language, though. For example, when we're talking about <laughs> metaphors of time, we can be either uh, ego-focused or object-focused. So we can be ego-focused like we're moving toward the weekend. We're, we're, we're going into next month. We're going into March. Or we can be object-focused. We can say, oh, Christmas is coming and we're stationary. So we can be moving or it can be moving. And uh, so there's there's parallels in our metaphors of motion as well. Let's move next. on to the next one. Carol Jameson is the namesake of Carol Evans. I gave last names to make this question a little easier. I hope it works. Okay. What follows from this statement? Carol Jameson was named after Carol Evans. Carol Evans was named after Carol Jameson. Could be either, or they both just happen to have the same name. Carol Jameson is the namesake of Carol Evans. Who was named after whom or neither? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got it. I, Carol I think I got it, but everyone's right? got it wrong. <laughs> what did you think? Like, surely namesake, independent of what the democratic sort of process reveals, surely namesake just has a definition, right? Hmm. This is semantics. Yeah. But yeah. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold the phone. You're going to look it up in a dictionary, Ben, but I've done this. <gasps> really? Just... Why do people, why are people wrong? Carol Evans was named after Carol Jameson. So Carol Evans is the younger person. So what, the, what people are saying here, 60%, is that Carol Jameson is an older person, say, had the name first. And they are the namesake. Carol Evans comes along, gets the name of her namesake, Carol Jameson. Okay, so let's talk about this one. No, because it's got it's got an unexpected twist to it here. This one, by the way, this I got inspiration from the layman's linguist who ran a poll on this. And when the layman's linguist did a poll, it ran 35% to 40% between our first two answers. So I looked this up in the OED. And it says here, and I quote, a namesake is a person who, or thing which, has the same name as another. It does not specify the direction at all. Yeah, and in fact, that the sentence does. What would you mean the Carol sentence? Oh, yeah. Otherwise, you might oh. not say the, by the way, so it might say a. Uh, well, I will I will tell you that if you look in the OED and you see that definition, which is pretty bi-directional, and then you look at the examples that they cite, it's back and forth. Sometimes the namesake is described as the older thing that gave it the name, and then sometimes it's the younger thing. Can I ask uh, Dida if in Danish you also have namne? Have what did you say? Namne, like that person Nein. is my namne. Nein. Nein? Okay. No? Yeah, Swedish, no? we just said a no, word that means like a, a namer, like a namey. Like, mm. no, I don't like think I have, have a namey. Oh, okay. Yeah, we would just say she's named after me or, or she happens to have the same name as me or, or something like that, I think. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. I think it matters if you know who's younger. I think oh, 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 oh wait, wait, wait. We, 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 we could, we, we might say about someone with. The same name. She's my name sister or name brother or something like that. Ah, Isn't there that we go. Yeah, yeah. So what is what does know. that mean though? Does that mean that one person was named after another, or they just happen to have I, the same name? I think it just means they happen. Well, I think it could be yeah. all of them, really. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that is kind of vague. Let's go on to. We're almost there. We're coming up to our last ones. I feel I feel good about how this is going. Uh, Pharaoh Cat gave us this one after a toot from Colin the Mathmo. I just about caught the train. Oh Does that my mean God. they caught the train mm -hmm. or they missed the train? Mm -hmm. I just about caught oh, the train. God. 
Oh, thank God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, democracy. Thank you, people in our chat room. I just, this, <laughs> this makes me feel a lot better. You made Ben feel good, and, and that's what matters here. Okay, nine of us have voted. Number 10. Okay, I am going to end this now. Dude. And I'm going to share it. They missed the train. This is kind of what I would say. Because if I just about fell over, I didn't fall over. I failed to do the thing. However, apparently no. some British sports commentators are starting to use just about did the thing to mean they managed to do the thing successfully, but by the slimmest possible margin. Isn't that a I fascinating? I don't care for that at all. <laughs> that is exactly but... how I voted. And that is what I care for entirely. Oh, is that right? <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Because to me, we can all I, handle I more looked ambiguity. At that that, that th the previous things were like mind tongue twisters. This was not all that for me. I was like, yeah, they caught the train. That <laughs> just is about, huh? wrong. No you are wrong. Okay. Well, well, if I say I just caught the train. Yes. Successful. Correct. And recently. It's almost like adding that extra word changes the meaning of the sentence in the way. What? Just that words work. How insane you are! <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. You know, when you put words next to other words, you can get some strange chemical reactions. Mm. All right, we are going to go to our last one, and okay. it is one also from uh, from Pharaoh Cat. Pew, 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 pew. I think this one's easy, but it's still fascinating nonetheless. Do you mind pushing in that chair? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, we've all been here where mm -hmm. you have to clarify, like, hey, baby, did you want me to turn on the thing? No, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like negative questions. Aren't you yeah, ready negative yet? negative questions just always. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you feel like when you ask one, you feel like a doofus for having asked it because you've now obliged the person to, like, do the little mental roundabout as they're like, yeah, but no, but yes, but no. I can see that there are some people who haven't answered yet and maybe aren't sure what their answer is going to be. Do you mind pushing in that chair? Yes. Do you mind pushing in that chair? No. No, I don't mind. No, I won't do it. Yeah. If I ask someone that and they say yes, I, unless they look particularly mean, then I'd assume they were going to push push the chair but i would also be thinking you should answer no then <laughs> <laughs> to answer that they mean yes because uh, it's, it's one of those funny ones as well like my 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 response to this is like do you mind pushing in that chair yes if a person genuinely minds pushing in the chair in in certainly in australia you then have to apologize right like because we're like over apologizers mm -hmm. so you've got to be like Yes, actually, so, I'm so sorry. I do mind. I'm I'm like waiting for a friend. But you have to present it as if you've basically murdered one of their children and now have to like drag their body through the street with them watching. Like it's so silly. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. there is an image. You know, it is funny though. But one thing I noticed in my research is that when you have a dispreferred answer, and this is pretty well known, uh, there's a pause. There's a hesitation. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you mind pushing in that chair? Yes, as in, yes, I do mind. Or if they say sure, <gasps> which functionally means yes. So this means, so our the results. answers, the results are, I'll do it to the tune of 71%. Well, are you surprised? Was that a surprise? I was surprised it wasn't 100%. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think the, I think uh, the answer here is that it depends. It depends on it pauses. Depends on it depends on time and yeah. It does. And there are people from cultures <laughs> that I've experienced where a very abrupt yes will mean, yes, I do mind. I'm not going to do it. I'm thinking um, Israelis, French people, <laughs> like, like some, some Scandi people can be super, super direct. Like if you ask them a question of like, do you mind pushing in that chair? They'll just be like, yeah. And then they'll just be like, I'm not doing it. And then you got to do the thing where you say, when you say yes, do you mean? <laughs> yeah. ah. But it's also probably in answer to the fact that like the way you phrase that question in those cultures is, 
pushing that chair. Yeah, yeah. Like you, it's not. It's yeah, not totally. supposed to be a question. Like if you, if you, you made it a yeah, question. If you now ask a funny it little weird question, they'll just be like, "That was dumb. You didn't give me an instruction." Yeah, exactly. Well, I, it's like, yeah. what are you? What are you up to? Well, I noticed for the longest time that my two young daughters would do something very strange when I would ask them negative questions like, don't you want to go? And they would say, yes, which means, yes, I don't want to go. They would do it in a way that I think of as Japanese because I learned that. And they would just do it over and over again. And it was just so disorienting. I had to realize I noticed it every time they did it and they've stopped now. So it's really interesting and funny. You beat it out. Good boy. Good boy. Thank you for voting. Thank you for your answers. And thank you for putting up with me having to do like copy and paste polls on the fly. I appreciate <laughs> that I wasn't quite fully on. But let me just say there's a there's a lesson here, and that is that semantics is underspecified. Semantics is underspecified. The meaning of words is underspecified. We use words to get us part of the way there, but then as we've seen in our examples, we use context and we use real world knowledge and we use our knowledge of the people and we use guesses about their intentions and whether they're going to push in the chair, whether they mm-hmm. look like they're in chair pushing mode. We use all those things to fill in the blanks. And that means that language is ambiguous and we often have to clarify, but that's not usually a problem because disambiguation is a human superpower. Where we're really good at sorting it out. And then we get an added bonus, and that is that words and phrases can do double duty depending on situations that we are good at reading. Any other comments? Are you happy with the way things went, Ben? Uh, I mean, I'll forget this in two episodes anyway, so it's all G. Okay. Well, be sure to listen back like I do and then edit the transcript. <laughs> and then be mad Then you'll remember everything. Yes, then you can die mad about it. Yeah, just be and angry again. And then I'll remember neither option either. Hmm. Mm. Let's move on to our words of the week. This one was suggested by Lisa, and it's hard launch. The quote is Lizzo Uh. hard launches Mm -hmm. her boyfriend. This is our second Lizzo word of the week. Lizzo hard Mm -hmm. launches her boyfriend on social media ahead of the 2023 Grammy Awards. I would have thought Mm -hmm. that she shot him out of a cannon, but that's not what it means in terms of a hard launch. What does this mean? Do you guess? You want to guess? It is the opposite of a soft launch. So mm. they used to just be launch. And then there was soft launch, which was like when you like, um, you spread it to some people and then some people and you like let it trickle instead of being mm. like, pew, 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 Kaboom. we did the thing. Boyfriend. And then there's been so many soft launches that now it's like, well, Lissa was like, public announcement, doo, 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 everyone, I got boyfriend. Here he is. Here's what he looks like. Isn't he gorgeous? And yeah. That's a hard launch. I like hard launch. I would launch. like to imagine there was like actual fanfare, like literal ranks of soldiers with those funny long trumpets with flags hanging off the ends of the trumpets doing like a full. Now that's a hard launch. And then you take a bottle and like break it over his head like he's a ship <laughs> or something. <laughs> the yeah. term soft launch and hard launch date from 1978. Uh, they referred to <laughs> missiles. A, a soft launch is where it is. The missile is non-explosively ejected before its engine is ignited, and a hard launch is when it is ignited while it's still in the launch assembly. How fascinating. And it's moved over into the business world. By 1985, it was extended to marketing. So there's the history of soft launch and hard launch, and now we're seeing it applied to boyfriends. How awesome. How fascinating. This one's suggested by Liz. It's a combining form. I love the combining forms. Graham. Liz says. I heard the term horrendogram today used to describe a particularly Mm -hmm. complicated diagram in a corporate PowerPoint presentation, horrendogram. I love it and thought it could be a word of the week. Might also generate a broader discussion about the gram or ogram combining form. For example, spaghettigram, similar to horrendogram, and the very old-fashioned and slightly different gorillagram. What? What? (laughs) Wait, what? Also, oh, why aren't these graphs? Is it is uh, well the gorilla gram is because it borrows it not from diagram but from telegram. Anybody know what I'm talking about? No. Or, <gasps> oh, I see. Are you? I are you're it. about to? I know what's about to happen here, Daniel. This is going to be like when you talked about how you went to libraries with like reference cards. You're about to be fucking old, aren't you? Uh, it's just one of those '80s things. Go ahead. Yep. <laughs> so. 
Ben and everyone else, do you know of the concept of a singing telegram? I do not. Oh, no. it is a thing that occurs in like American movies and TV show, and probably yes. not in real yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I just realized yeah. I'm thinking back to when I was a kid and I watched like bad SNL like yes. comedy movies, and someone shows up at your door and you're like, "Hello, this is your singing telegram," that kind of thing. Yes. So right. imagine that, but the person is wearing a gorilla costume. It's a uh, gorilla gram. Uh, was that a thing that happened, or was that a joke? Still is. Well, you can still send someone a gorilla gram. Mm -hmm. And I know your address, Ben. Oh, <laughs> hey, man, we've got multiple barriers to entry to this place. Daniel's house, on the other hand, that's why wide I'm waiting open. until that I know true. that you're at like a restaurant. You're, you'll be at a restaurant. Valentine's Day's coming. I'm going to put out the troops. Actually, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the movie Brazil, where the protagonist, Sam, is at home and his mother sends a singing telegram and she gives a really ear-splitting invitation to a party. And then there's an awkward silence. And she says, it's reply paid. And he says, oh, oh, okay. Um, two, three, four. Mother, I am afraid that I can. She says, no, no, you don't have to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite scenes. Annie makes a good point, which I also agreed with. I thought the gram would have been linked to Instagram. Instagram. Like, Instagram. I, like I would have yeah, thought like sure. flexogram or like, um, yeah. like uh, strivogram huh. or something like that would be a thing. I've certainly never heard that. I wonder, has anybody else taken gram from Instagram and started using that as a combining form? Anyone heard no, this? No, but I thought when you said gorilla gram that it was a zoo who was posting a lot of pictures of gorillas. <laughs> or like wow. a, a gorilla sanctuary or something yeah 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 and yeah. then it was like oh we're on gorilla gram i mean cam is used that way a lot gorilla cam okay so hang on i feel like mm -hmm. we've got to do the digging in where does the gram in telegram come from not graham bell surely oh no writing. No, 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 no it's greek it's greek okay. it's writing wait, wait. right is graph and gram one of those alternating pairs that are pretty much just the same uh, thing i thought so Oh, then what's so a gramophone? Too. So Colleen just said, oh. Uh, gramophone is like writing writing sound because you like make it in the... I'm, with, the I'm with the grooves. Wildly. Grooves. With the grooves oh. from the ancient <laughs> grebe. Or the graves. Yeah, so Does it is... Does anyone want to hear testimonials from gorillagram.com.au? I don't. Uh, no, no, not Thank really, you, no. no. Okay. Our last, um, Glyph has suggested POV, but it's used for second person shots. And I had trouble understanding what that was, except that Tiger second Web referenced best. it in Lincom. What is this, Hedvig? Help me. Okay. So Ben and I, your local TikTok correspondents here reporting for duty. They're on Hello. TikTok, so I don't have to. POV is also a thing on um, YouTube. Like, uh, do you remember when I was talking about POV playlist? Yes, POV playlist are things where it's like, imagine that you're in uh, a yeah, 1930s okay. veranda gotcha. and yeah. you can hear the mosquitoes and there's some music in the background. So, it's, and POV stands for point of view. There are also creepy ones where it's like, imagine that this guy is your boyfriend and he's feeding you chicken soup, and then there's an ASMR guy being like, "Hello, sweetie, do you want oh. to have some?" That is not something any of us need. <laughs> That's no, horrific. there's a whole genre of this, from ranging from like more or less erotic. Some of them, one of them, there's a lot of weird ones. Stop it! Um, stop it! I'm, okay. I'm cutting cool. you off. Yeah. right there. So this is used. So you said you're in a you're on a veranda in the 30s. That does sound like second person. Is that what we're talking about? No. So it's like it's like as if you're like the video you're viewing is from your point of view, right? Oh, okay. Okay. It's like when yes. the creepy boyfriend is like, would you like chicken soup? He's like looking at right. the camera. But being no, like, no, no, no. I, I get like what Daniel's soup? asking though, is sort of oh, semantically what it does mean from a, like a literary perspective is a second person existence, right? Like you have to imagine, you put yourself into another space and place, mm. right? Like it's a, like when they say point of view, they do not mean a literal point of view, right? Because that would be, literally the things you see mm -hmm. no it's a first person perspective you're the girlfriend if that was the case then you would need to like 
like you would need to like i think we're doing the literally figuratively thing here like all novels do what you're describing without being in the first person right they take you on a journey they take you places and put you in spaces but the younger generation just kind of erroneously have used POV because I think they grew up hearing POV a lot in like the various media that they consumed. And they're like, ha, ah, POV, you're like on a swampy bayou and there's like banjos twingy twanging in the background and you can hear the gators rumbling, blah, 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 blah. What they actually mean is like, please imagine the following thing. <laughs> Not like, I literally think that you are. It's third person, not second. You. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So is this the same thing as you were describing ages ago, Hedvig, of the POV playlists? Are we just doing the same thing twice? I think we might be. Uh, I think I, I'm, I'm really struggling. Way. No, so, wait, wait, Hedvig, okay. Let, yeah. If I'm playing a computer game, yeah. I usually have two choices of the camera. Yes. First person and third yes. person. Yes. First person, I'm looking through the eyes of my little avatar. Yes. Yes, Third yes, person, correct. I am yes. the camera is behind and I see yeah. my my myself me, yeah. from mm. uh above. Okay. Yeah. What what the fuck is the second person? Well, that's the you, right? Yeah. So like you're being addressed. Think like choose your own adventure novels, a second person. I feel like we're retreading the same ground here. So you know what? I think I'm gonna move it on to our last one. Yes. Is that okay? Okay. It has been a shift though. Oh, what? Sorry? There has been a shift uh, in like TikToks. Um, like, you, you, if you've seen like a standard TikTok video with a, an overlaid caption, originally you'd see like POV, you come home and your girlfriend's mad at you or something. And then the video would be of someone pretending to be your girlfriend. So it was like a mm -hmm. first person video in that. Like a literal POV shot, point yeah. of view shot from a technical yes. perspective. Now, uh -huh. now you see videos that are captioned like POV, you know, you're with your friends and doing a bunch of stuff stuff. And it's you that like the, the you in there is actually in the video. Ah, oh, okay. you can see you. Okay. So that's third person. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. I think we found the shift. Ben, Thank you, Ben. The first one I think is on my side. Yeah, Ben wins. All of this. Yep. Okay, that, that augmented my understanding. Thank you very much. So that is, that is actually a really interesting shift. It, a similar, similar to the way that a selfie doesn't have to be of yourself anymore. People, people have come up, people have reported that some people are coming up to them and saying, could you take a selfie of us? And the person taking yeah. the photo wouldn't even be in there at all. So there's a lot of shift going on with the language of film and photo, as you would expect with the, uh, the speed of the medium. Let's finish up okay. with the last one, Mummy, mm -hmm. suggested by Diego. Museums are uh, shifting away from calling mummies mummies. Mm -hmm. Instead, they yes, are yes, starting yes. to say things like a mummified person as a yeah. way of approaching the whole thing with a bit of sensitivity and tact, realizing that this was a person who lived and who cared about their body, had certain beliefs and ideas. So um, a mummified person. Makes perfect sense. In, I think so, too. It also makes sense because a, a word, the word mummy has in a particularly like in American culture and, and cartoons from like 50s and 60s and like cereal boxes is like a monster the same way that like you could be a, a yeti or, or like something or else, something. Yeah. a werewolf, mm -hmm. whereas that's not what mummies are. They're people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Corpses, in fact. Yeah. Yeah. Just staying away from that whole 50s schlocky B-movie thing, which, you know, is present for no disrespect to Brendan Fraser. All right. So what have we got? We've got hard launch. We've got combining form Graham, POV, and mummy are words of the week. As far as comments, everyone who's listening, I am seeing your emails, but I'm terribly snowed under because I've just been to a conference and there's episodes and things. So let me dig out slowly Aww. and I will be reading your things out. I'm going to say a big thank you to everybody who suggested things for things for this episode. Thank you for coming and voting. Thanks to Dustin of Same Man Stories, who still recommends us to everyone. The team at Speech Docs, who transcribes all the words. And most of all, you, our lovely patrons, who give us so much support and make it possible to keep the show going. Thank you all for being here. Oh, what's that music?
I'm <laughs> pretending <laughs> there's music. Hedvig, why oh, don't right. you give us I'm, a... I'm, I'm making yeah. the McDonald's tune for some reason. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Wait, also, can I just ask, were you making the Australian McDonald's tune? Does like McDonald's do that little jingle in other countries? McDonald's made this jingle like 15 years ago and it's in every country. Okay. I, was, I haven't traveled yeah. internationally in a long time, okay? Well, we're just getting rid of that and putting in our end theme instead. Yeah. That's enough of that. Mm. I think, oh, I, think okay. I got you first. Oh shit, sorry. Uh, sorry, I got so distracted by Marcus. Ah, da, 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 da. scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I am first. This is uh, fun. Uh, if you like the show, uh, which hopefully you, you do if you listen this far, or if you hate listeners, a download's a download. I don't care. Um, but if you do <laughs> listen and you did like us, uh, feel free to do some things to uh, support our show. Uh, we, we like making this show and, and we hope you like it too. And if you do, here's some things. You can follow us on all the social places. Uh, we are Because Lang Pod. And you can also leave us a message on SpeakPipe uh, on our, our website, becauselanguage.com. You can send us an old-fashioned email and Daniel will get to it when he has time. And it is hello at becauselanguage.com. You can tell a friend about us. That's always a great way of uh, learning about new podcasts. And you can leave us a review in any of the places where you can leave a review. So if you use uh, whatever podcast app you use, you can usually leave a review. I choose this sort of the place a lot of people go, but I can also recommend Podchaser, which is a website that sort of collects reviews from lots of different places. And we do have a new review from Chris. We don't uh, have to read it if you don't want to. Have you read this? With the title, Undeniably Excellent, Undeniably Infuriating. Yes. Yes. Which is, I think, And five. then what I love, what I love underneath that, five stars. Five stars. Five stars. Um, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I am reading ahead now. I'm, can you read this now? Yes. Uh, do you, uh, would we, like to. we don't have to if it's... To, if you feel like you're being x-rayed, I, we don't have to do it. Can I, no. can I read it? Go ahead, Ben. Because okay, I have a feeling I feature. Um, I listen, have listened, seeming all the linguistic podcasts and BL is top tier. It features a truly wide variety of topics, a pleasing blend of the irreverent and the intellectual and fascinating guests. That said, you will have to learn to live with one of the most frustrating trios of hosts out there. <laughs> one is dependably excellent and obviously thinks about the audience. One is incredibly bright, but often equally painfully smug. And the last sometimes affected brashness does little to conceal the brittle girders of his fragile ego. That's me. But truly, the excellence is more than worth learning to live with the bad. And I recommend it to anyone with an interest in language, linguistics and words, just as I do to everyone else whose ear I can bend. I love that review so much. That is my. That's from someone who likes us. <laughs> That's from someone who also, likes us. Can just we, to engage can we just in therapy talk for who? a second, I feel, I feel incredibly seen right now. I feel incredibly witnessed. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Five so stars just, is five stars. No, five stars is five stars. Can we just so dependably excellent and obviously thinks about the audience is. Daniel. Daniel, obviously. Uh, incredibly bright, but often equally painfully smug is me. That, that's, yes, that's, definitely you. That's you. I love it. I love it. And the, and the, and I quote, uh, sometimes affected brashness, which does little to conceal the brittle girders of his fragile ego. Oh, gee willikers. <laughs> He's my, got your number. My name's Ben. I'll be here all week. Oh my God. I love it. More like these, it. please. Yeah. More like this. If, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. I'm putting. I'm. If anyone is still listening at this point in the show, and like, good on you if you are. I I defy you to leave us a five star complimentary but viciously Just honest attack <laughs> review. This that would great. be so good. Mm. Go ahead, Ben. It's it's your <laughs> bit. <clears throat> you can also. If you want to go be above and beyond Chris's magnificent prose about my qualities, uh, you can become a patron. You'll get bonus episodes. You can hang out with us on Discord. Chris, join us on Discord. You can attack me 
in like well not in person but at least in a, a quicker turnaround than that review was and i will enjoy it just as much uh you will also be making it possible though if you become a patron to have us transcribe the show by the wonderful wonderful people at speech docs who every single goddamn show have to listen to my prattering on guarding my fragile ego and somehow turn it into a word document and i always applaud their efforts a shout out to our top patrons <gasps> isden termi elias matt whitney helen jack Barrowcat, Lord Mortis, Graham again, Larry, Christopher, Andy B, James, Nigel, Meredith, Kate, Nazrin, Joanna, Aisha, Moe, Steele, Magare, Manu, Roger, Rian, Colleen, Ignacio, Sonic, Snedgehog, Kevin, Jeff, Andy from Logophilia, Stan, Kathy, Rach, Felicity, Amir, Kenny, Archer, O oh, Tim, Alyssa, Chris. You did it. I can't believe oh, it. And our newest patron at the listener level, Meng. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> no, no, no. You you got through the list. That's fine. Thanks to all our wonderful patrons. Our theme music has been written and performed by Drew Klopianov, who's a member of Ryan Bino and a member of Didion's Bible. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you on the flippity flop because language. Wow. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Anybody want to wave? Let's wave. Yay. Thanks for sticking with us. Did you have fun? And if there's anything that you'd like to tweet or toot, you can tweet or toot it with the hashtag LingFest23, because this is a LingFest jam. Yay, LingFest. I'm going to go to Twitter. Yeah. I have accidentally, um, when I twipe, type, when I twipe, when I... <laughs> That's typing something on Twitter, Twitter, folks. When I go to Twitter, <laughs> and I type like in the URL on my web browser, I type like Twitter, it doesn't go to, to twitter.com, it defaults to another page on Twitter, which is about uh, an underwater Sharknado that we covered before. Oh, that's right. Wicked. And because I happen to go to that one every time, my your, uh, my browser is just like, oh, you love that page. That is when you write Twitter. <laughs> that is where you want to go. Do you want me so, to make that your start page? It's essentially my start page on Twitter is NASA footage shows an underwater Sharknado home to mutant fish has erupted. I, I wonder if we need to come up with, or perhaps there already is one, the name or the word or the description for when you're profoundly lazy and you keep going to the wrong url to get you to the right url do other people do that like i i keep going yeah exactly what hedvig just described right like you go to that one bizarre deeply buried link and then you go oh yeah and then i've got to click on like the home page and get back to where i actually want to go because I don't know how to do it for reals. Well, because like bookmarks would obviously make me a boomer. So I'm not going to mess with those. So instead, I just type in the first few letters of a URL, go to that thing, then go to the next step. It's that kind of talk that causes unrest. Critique from the crowd. Hedvig, have you pasted the link to the Sharknado tweet so that we can make that our homepage now? Because I will. <laughs> um. Yeah.